Two more episodes, ladies and gentlemen. Two more episodes until the new season of Setup Wars. I am so freaking excited. If you guys remember in the last video, I kind of teased about a new seal of approval. And well, I so happen to have a sample right here at the office. So without wasting any more time, here's a quick sneak peek at the new seal of approval for Setup Wars season five. This is actually the first time I'm seeing this too. So I'm pretty freaking excited to see how it's gonna look. Oh my God. My heart is pounding really fast. Got some bubble wrapping, okay. By the way, this is how the packaging is. Whoever wins the seal of approval, you get this shipped with a uh, priority mailbox, some bubble wrap, and the actual box for the seal of approval. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Got some more padding inside, of course, of course. Here it is, you guys. Oh, damn! So that looks clean. Oh man, that looks clean. Sadly, this isn't mine, even though my name is on there, but I kind of just ordered one just so I can see what it looks like before I ship it out to the people. Oh my God, this looks so damn cool. Damn, that is a sexy plaque. I am not gonna lie. I may be biased, but I must have shopped around like 20 different trophy websites across the US. And honestly, I still can't find anything better than the current plaque. So the plaque itself is still the same. The only thing different is the actual logo. Now it has the TechSource logo on there. So you know you're getting a TechSource certified official seal of approval. This is all glass, by the way. It's not cheap acrylic like the previous season. And you get a nice heavy granite base to display it. You can definitely feel that premium quality in this when you hold it. This is not a toy, okay? It's not cheap either. This thing costs a pretty penny, believe it or not. I put a lot of love and care into my seal of approval, so when I give it to someone, you better bet your ass that they deserve it. So, yeah. What do you guys think about the new seal of approval? Let me know in the comment section below. I also stuck to neutral colors and a kind of symmetrical shape so it fits perfectly with any setup. I want this to be proudly displayed on a desk. That's kind of the whole purpose behind this thing. But anyways, that's enough about the seal of approval. Uh, if you guys want to be a part of the show, as always, make sure to watch the video link down below. But with that said, sit back and relax because it's time for Setup Wars. Before we continue, I'm gonna give a huge thanks to Van Kyo for sponsoring today's video. If you guys are on a budget and you're looking around for a quality projector for your home or office, then keep watching. The Van Kyo Leisure 530W is a compact 1080p projector with an LCD display chip that can project over 2 million raw pixels to achieve these beautiful, vibrant colors. You can project up to 170 inches with a 20% shorter distance compared to other projectors in its class. But one of the coolest things about the Leisure is that the keystone correction is done automatically through a press of a button on the remote. So you don't have to spend a bunch of time in the settings to adjust it. You can mirror content straight from your iOS or Android device, or you can stream directly from another device via HDMI or a USB drive. I currently have this connected to my PS4 in the loft for console gaming, and I gotta say, it's pretty awesome playing on a projector. So if you guys wanna check out the Leisure from Vankyo, make sure to click my link down below. Kicking off the episode is Chris number one from the UK, who was a British army sniper that's now in training to be a military helicopter pilot. Okay, damn, we have a certified badass over here. He's even got an award to prove it. So this is what an army sniper setup looks like. Interesting. He built this for gaming and casual streaming with dual monitors that he mounted to the popular Carably countertop and a few white Alex units for support and additional storage. I'm loving that cyberpunk wallpaper that he has on both of his 27 inch curved monitors, but sadly they are blocking out the speakers that you have in the back. Why not just place one of them on the right side and move the sub to the ground to make room for the left speaker? Wouldn't that make the most sense? 
For peripherals, we've got the HyperX Alloy Elite RGB keyboard with the Mad Cat's Rat Pro Gaming mouse. I like that you wrap the cable together for the Stream Deck Mini, but you could also run the mouse cable underneath the keyboard to clean it up a bit more. The speakers are Chris's main source for audio, but he also owns a pair of Beat Studio headphones that he keeps in his drawer. All the more reason to fix the placement of the speakers if they are your main source of audio. He does own a webcam as well as a blue Snowball Ice microphone hooked up to a boom arm behind the monitor. I'm really impressed with the cable management skills. He did such a clean job of wrapping those cables underneath the desk and even took the extra step to Velcro the cables behind his PC to keep them from flaring. Speaking of the PC, we have a beautiful micro ATX build inside the H510 Elite. It's packing the i7-9700K and the Strix RTX 2080. Such a nice looking build to complement a nice setup. I would just recommend for you to rearrange your speakers, but other than that, it's an awesome setup you built here. Thanks for entering, and even though you're not in the USA, I thank you for your service either way. Coming in at number two is Chris, number two. How convenient. He is an accountant from Greece that built this entire setup from scratch. Starting with the actual desk, looks like he went with a reflective countertop with two drawers and some kind of riser in between. It actually looks amazing. Well done. He even added a few shelves near the top to display his katana. Nice. He's keeping things simple with a single 32-inch curved monitor from Asus and the K70 keyboard paired with the G903 mouse. I like that you went with the Corsair white PBD keycaps. In my opinion, I think the keyboard looks a lot better with these on. Also bonus points for drilling a hole in your desk for that one cable. Personally, I think you picked up the perfect speakers for your setup. The white Luna Eclipse E25s fit the theme so perfectly, and it's also nice to see that you stuck with the white theme. I'm guessing you went with the white Corsair Virtuosos for the same reason. I do like the way you manage the cables. Adding a power strip on both sides of the desk offers a bit of flexibility, and then we have a Signum rack in the middle doing all the heavy lifting. Nicely done. And finally, we've got the PC powering it all. It's a custom rig equipped with the 9900K and the ASUS Strix RTX 2060. The icing on the cake, however, are those nanoleaf panels you added on the wall. They really do help bring your setup to life. Such a creative and unique setup. Thank you, Chris, for sharing this with us. Coming in number three is Jir from Finland and his white on black setup. Damn, that is such a beautiful setup. Just look at the contrast between the gear. Such perfection. Jir works in IT and this is the setup he built for gaming, entertainment and listening to music. He's got a single 27 inch ASUS monitor mounted against the IKEA backhand desk with an Alex cabinet on the side to keep his PC the same level as his desk. Nicely done. For peripherals, you got the Corsair K95 Platinum paired with a few mice, the G502 Lightspeed for gaming, and the MX Master 2 for productivity. What's interesting here is that he cut his mouse pad so that it matches the size of the keyboard. I haven't seen this in a while. I also love the way he managed those audio interface cables. Having them go through the desk along with your keyboard wire is quite genius, actually. He's also got quite the audio setup as well. My dude is rocking big bro Yamaha HS7s with a massive sub on the floor and two pairs of headphones hanging from the side of the desk. We got the DT990 Pros and the Sony WH-1000s, both really solid pairs of headphones. And then he has an AT2020 microphone hooked up to the Rode boom arm. I'm just loving his gear selection. I can tell he put some time into researching the gear and the planning of the setup and it shows in the execution. Everything is just nicely organized. There's symmetry, cable management is on point with the use of the cable net underneath the desk, and even went the extra mile with those spiral sleeves. See, this is how you properly use those sleeves. Well done, Jir. The PC powering it all is a beautiful custom build featuring the 8600K and the GTX 1070 Strix. Such a clean system to complement a clean setup. Thank you, Jir, for sharing this with us. Coming in number four is Logan and his streaming and video editing setup. He's a Twitch streamer and a high school basketball player. Damn, he's even been on the front page of a magazine. I've never heard of the magazine, but that's pretty damn awesome, especially for being only 17 years old. That is quite the accomplishment, if you ask me. So the setup is quite fascinating. The first thing that caught my eye was the monitor layout. We got triple displays with spacing between all of them. We got a vertical and horizontal that are mounted to the desk and one more up top that's mounted to the wall. I'm not gonna lie, at first I had mixed feelings with the location of the monitors, but after a while, I kinda like it. Is it weird that I like it? With three monitors, you can't really go with a symmetrical layout, especially since one of them is in vertical mode and there isn't really enough space on the desk otherwise. So I get why he did it this way. 
Also, there is no rule that says that all the monitors have to be connected to each other, right? In the end, it's all about comfort and what works best for you. Looks like he was going for a monochromatic color scheme with accent lining. And to stay consistent with that, he went with the Huntsman TE keyboard with white keycaps and he paired that with the white Model O gaming mouse. Moving on to audio, we have a pair of Mackie CR3 speakers and the Astro A40s hanging underneath the desk. As far as the streaming gear is concerned, he does have a single ring light right above. And if you're wondering why the microphone is really high up there, it's because he mounted a boom arm on the actual monitor arm itself, which adds a longer reach to it. I also love the location of the camera. He hooked it up on the Archon camera clamp and mounted it to the desk. So he's got that perfect height and angle during streams. Cable management isn't too bad. I can definitely see the effort he put into it with some raceways and cable clips, so I don't really have any major complaints. Now the PC powering the setup is pretty dope. We got the super popular Lian Lee OE11 Dynamic once again with a 3700X and the ASUS RTX 2060. My only concern with the PC is that you have your top fans set as intake instead of exhaust. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but other than that, it is a pretty sweet looking rig. If I'm being honest, that entire corner with the black acoustic panels doesn't really contribute anything to the setup. It kind of feels out of place, especially since there is no consistency anywhere else in the setup. I feel like it will look a lot cleaner without the panels. Also, those 12 panels won't make a huge difference in soundproofing for your bedroom. But other than that minor critique, I think this setup is pretty badass. Despite the unique monitor layout, it actually has a lot of synergy and function. Thank you, Logan, for sharing this with us. Wrapping up the episode is Niklas from Germany and his very unique custom-made cyberpunk-inspired gaming setup. Fun fact, this submission was originally sent for the LG competition where the winner will take home a brand new 86-inch LG TV, but I guess the submission was sent a little late so it didn't get featured. In all my years of hosting setup boards, this is the first time I've seen a headboard made out of stainless steel. Well, actually just the outer shell is steel and the inside is made out of MDF wood. He even made the legs in steel as well. I'm kind of obsessed with this headboard to be honest. I feel like if it was just any other setup it would look weird, but it sort of works with the whole cyberpunk vibe. I don't know, what do you guys think? Although I do have to say that the wood countertop doesn't do the headboard justice. I feel like either black, white, or even a gray tabletop would have looked great with it. Hey Manix, can you change the color of the tabletop so we can see the difference? Let's start off with black, then let's switch to white, and finally gray. You guys can be the judge. So Nicholas built this setup for gaming, working, graphic design, and sometimes he uses it to learn coding. We got a 27 inch monitor in the center, being sandwiched by two additional 24 inch monitors for multitasking, and finishing up with a 42 inch TV up top as an overhead. I love how all the monitors and speakers are mounted against the headboard, giving off this beautiful floating look. For peripherals, he kept things simple with the Rocat Vulcan keyboard and the dark core RGB mouse. He does own a gaming headset, but honestly, if I was him, I wouldn't even bother using that considering he has an entire 5.1 surround sound system built just for his setup. We got three speakers in the front, along with two more in the back. That is absolutely nuts. He watches movies on the TV and he games on his PS4, which is tucked away behind it. I'm not gonna even question the man's cable management skills. He has dedicated cutouts for his monitors, the speakers, along with a subwoofer and the PC on the ground. We got the Ryzen 7 3700X in here with the Zotac GTX 1080 Ti. I would advise against leaving the PC on carpet. If you can, I would buy a PC stand, but if you're on a tight budget, you can even pick up a monitor riser and use that instead. I noticed there isn't really any type of color scheme for the setup. I mean, you did go with some red accent lighting for some reason, but if the monitor bezels are what's bothering you, you can always skin them in black for a more color neutral setup. But either way, this is one of the coolest things I've seen in a while. Thank you, Nicholas, for sharing this with us. As a reminder, you guys can always pick up a cheap Windows CD key for less than $15. Just click on my link below and use the code TS20 for an extra 20% off. Once you get your CD key, just visit the activation settings in Windows and change your product key. It's that simple. And that will do for today's video. As always, comment down below and let me know which of these setups was your absolute favorite. And if you guys are excited for season five, let me know by backhanding that like button. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in the next one.